Hello and welcome. I am excited to share with you this powerful portfolio optimization dashboard built with Python and Streamlit. It's designed to help you experiment with your stock allocations by adjusting the number of shares for each asset in your portfolio. You will see how these changes affect your overall portfolio performance in real time. So let's take a closer look at how it works. We have on the left, the input for the exact number of shares for each stock in your portfolio. As you adjust these values, the dashboard will automatically recalculate the weights of each stock based on the total number of shares. As an example, initially I have one stock each. If I assume equal weights here, I have 20% weight for each asset. If I increase the number of shares for Apple now, you will see that Apple gets a higher weight and the other assets are getting a lower weight. On the right, you can see how these changes impact your portfolio performance. So if I'm adding Apple here, before I had one, I had an annual return of 0.09 and a risk of 0.3. If I'm adding another Apple stock to my portfolio now, it updates the annual return and volatility in real time, showing how risky or rewarding your portfolio and your portfolio change is. And of course, you can see the cumulative return of your portfolio plotted over time here. So let's do some more changes here. So if I'm adding Tesla, my return is dropping and my risk is increasing that's simply because Tesla didn't have the best recent history. So you see data from January 2022 until today is taken into account for the look back period. That being said, let's move on to the coding part. All right, let's get started. A couple of libraries are needed. Streamlit as our dashboarding library. Y Finance to pull historical stock prices, NumPy and Pandas for calculation slash data manipulation purposes. Then I'm just defining a couple of stocks here. Apple, Microsoft, Google, Amazon and Tesla. Just as an example, you can put in here whatever you are interested in or your own personal portfolio. Then I'm just pulling stock price data for those given stocks starting in 2022 and I'm just pulling the adjusted close column as I don't need the other columns for this particular analysis. Then I'm calculating the returns by applying the PCT change function and dropping off the first row here. And with that, I have the returns for all of my given stocks here. Moving on to some designing content. So I'm giving it a title. So it is the dashboard, calling it portfolio optimization based on number of shares, simply calling it as it is. And then I'm giving it a subtitle and just type in enter the number of shares for each asset in your portfolio. And this is just the user input for the number of shares you saw on the left hand side. And how it is working, you just create an empty dictionary and set the total shares to initially zero. And then you just loop to all those ticker symbols here, right? So you're just looping through this list here. So for ticker and tickers, and then you define the number of shares by taking a number input from the user, then give it a small input title enter number of shares for and then the particular ticker. So in the first situation, it's going to be Apple. And then you also set a minimum value here and a default value at or as zero. So let's say the user is taking one here for Apple, then it's just assigning to this dictionary the ticker here. So shares ticker and the ticker is going to be Apple, so it's going to set up a key value pair, which looks like Apple colon, and then the number of shares the user was putting in. 
Then, very important, it's also showing up the total shares. And the total shares are the number of shares plus the one you added here. So, meaning, the total shares in the first iteration, when you put in apple and then one, then you have total shares 0 plus 1, as the user was putting in 1, then you have total shares of 1. Then let's jump over to the next iteration, then we are at Microsoft. And then the, the user is putting in the number input for Microsoft, let's say he's just taking 1. Then you have shares ticker, so you have MSFT as the key in the dictionary equals or colon and then number of shares whatever the user was putting in so let's take one as a set then your total shares are not one anymore in the first iteration but now in the se second iteration you add the provided number of shares and you have the number of shares resulting then all right so this is just taking into account that you are getting more shares when the user is putting them in and you also have more total shares. Jumping over to the next one. If your total shares are greater than zero, so if the user put in something different than zero for any of those stocks, then you just calculate the weights. And how is this calculation working? Pretty simple. You just take the number of shares for a ticker, so let's take Apple and then one share, and you divide that by the total shares. And the total shares are calculated in this loop here. Example from the beginning. We got one stock each, meaning we get 0 0.2 as the weight for every single stock. So we have one, two, three, four, five stocks. And if you run this, you will get 1 divided by 5 here, which is 0 0.2, so you have weights of 0 0.2. And if you don't have anything, you just put in 0 for the weights. Now, moving next to the portfolio returns. You just take the weights now and then take the dot product with the returns. So you have a matrix of returns containing a time series with the columns of the assets. So Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, and so on. And then you take the dot product with the calculated weights. So for our very simple example in the beginning, you take this weights vector containing this 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, and then you just take the dot product with the returns. And with that, you have the portfolio return. To accumulate it, you just take the cumulative products. And with that, you have the portfolio cumulative return. That's just simple return calculations. I've covered that in detail in both of my old videos and also in detail in my Python for Finance course, which I highly recommend to check out out then portfolio variance simple story here also explained in detail both in my previous videos and in detail in my python for finance course you take the covariance matrix take the dot product with the weights vector and then again take the weights vector dot product with the results of that and then you Take the square root to get to the portfolio volatility. Then expected return is simply the mean return times the weights and then the, the sum out of that. Then you just do some yeah, design code again. So you print out the annual return, which is simply your calculated expected return taking the weights into account and you also print out the risk, which is your portfolio volatility. Then you also want to have an output of the weights and I'm just showing it as a weights dictionary. So what am I doing? I'm just taking the tickers index for I, which is just a loop over the length of the tickers. So in the first situation I got 
uh, what was it? Apple, colon, and then you have the weight for Apple, which is simply the first index of the weight vector for i in range, and then you're just getting a dictionary out of the calculated weights from above, and then you just write it, so you just print it out in the dashboard. And then finally, just to see how the portfolio is developing over time, with the assumed weights the user put into, you just plot a line chart of the portfolio cumulative returns. Finally, you just wrap that into a Python script, run Streamlit, as I've shown in some of my previous videos, and then you have a beautiful dashboard which you can play around. Have fun with that, and I thank you very much for watching, and I'm looking forward to see you in the upcoming videos. Cheers, bye, bye.